Hello, I'm Naaman, and this is the House of Pop Culture, where we talk about almost everything pop culture. Today, I'll be discussing the Aaron Rodgers situation, but uh, key details and uh, events in that story. I'll also be giving examples at the end of the video, and I'll be giving my opinion, of course, during the video. With that said, let's go. Yes, I, out of eyes, trying to put me on a t-shirt. Shorty, want me so bad, do your knees hurt? Yeah, I'm counting people. Today I want to get into the Aaron Rodgers situation, and I really want to give you the Packers perspective, then Aaron Rodgers perspective, then my perspective, right? I've been an Aaron Rodgers fan for about 10 years now, all right? And I just want you to understand all of everything that's going on from all different sides, all right? And I'll be giving examples for non-sports fans at the end. For people who might not understand this still. So in 2016 and 2017, the Green Bay Packers uh, missed the playoffs. Aaron Rodgers got injured. Kind of things going hand in hand. Um, and then Ted Thompson, that next offseason, stepped down. Like that offseason stepped down. The Packers decided to replace him with Brian Gutenkunst. Somebody who had been in the building for about 24 years, from like since like 1997, seen has been there and seen Ted Thompson work and seen the Packers way his whole career. You know what I mean? So in that offseason, Brian decided to cut Jordy Nelson because he was pretty expensive. $10 million salary hit. TJ Lang, I think he was about like an $8 million salary hit, maybe even more. Both were, were, were still players that could produce, but they were expensive. And then going into the draft, he drafted Jair Alexander, Marquez Valdez-Scanling, and Josh Jackson. Those are the major players he drafted in that draft. Going on to next season, um, the Packers ended 4-7-1. and one. Aaron Rodgers was injured again, not at, like he wasn't out. He came back and played the season, but he just wasn't the same. You could tell that his injury affected him the whole season. The Packers went 4-7-1. and one. They missed the playoffs, obviously. And you have Mike Pettin from the year before. He also went crazy in the offseason. He got Billy Turner, offensive line for like $7 million. He got... Preston Smith and Darius Smith, it was like $16 million each. Uh, Adrian Amos um, and Jimmy Graham. He drafted Rashawn Gary, Darnell Savage, and Eldon Jenkins in that draft. Which are, those are the key players. He cut Randall Cobb and Nick Perry, who hadn't been producing like they had before after they got their contract. Well, Randall Cobb had been injury prone and couldn't stay on the field, and he was expensive and old. And Nick Perry just hadn't lived up to his contract. First, go 13-3, and three, NFC Championship game. Um, you know, first-time head coach, Matt LaFleur, gets his team to the NFC Championship game. Aaron Rodgers, first time in the Matt LaFleur system, first time with all these new players. They get to the NFC Championship game. Aaron Rodgers goes, I think, 25-4, and four, touchdown and interceptions, um, like 4,200 yards. Um... And, like, those stats, while for Aaron Rodgers aren't, he, like, those are bad, like, kind of bad for Aaron Rodgers. But for anybody else in the league, those are amazing. Those are elite numbers. He had better numbers that year than Baker Mayfield this year. Baker Mayfield played amazing football this year for the Browns. That's why they got to the playoffs. Big reason why they got to the playoffs. So, losing the NFC Championship game, and in that next offseason, they sign, they let go of Blake Martinez. They let him walk, middle linebacker. So now we don't have a middle linebacker. They replace him with Christian Kirksey, who's an injury prone linebacker from the Cleveland Browns, who had a prime where he was one of the best linebackers in football, arguably, but has since rapidly regressed, largely due to injury. So f following. You know, that offseason, that will, the free agency period, you have the draft. And yes, Aaron Rodgers, his last two years, hadn't been the 
wizard dynamic amazing guy mostly due to injury and having a new system those prior two years respectively not only that he also you know had a brand new team but the Green Bay Packers decided to draft Jordan Love his replacement and to give you perspective Aaron Rodgers at that point in time still had four years on his deal so if you're just going on face value of his contract I mean Jordan Love wouldn't play until his fifth year option is up they also drafted AJ Dillon and um, some offensive linemen and a fullback they were really trying to prepare for the future you could tell and you could tell that they were trying to you know maybe predict Aaron Rodgers decline you know he's an aging quarterback he's been injured um, his stats have regressed so maybe hey, he's done and in about a year or two we can throw Jordan Love in there I don't know I don't know but let me give you Aaron Rodgers perspective he gets injured 26-2017 team lives, misses the playoffs the next season he gets in, he he gets he gets injured in the first game comes back in that game pulls off a comeback score wise against the bears wins that game goes on to have, have a losing season but still impressive first game and impressive season that he even played and then you follow that with the next year he has a new coach they go to the NC championship game and they're 13 and 3 to me, that shows that. That shows that shows that, right? So the Packers, they saw this. It all leads to this past football season. Aaron Rodgers threw for 48 touchdowns and five interceptions. He led the league in about 20 different stats. He was the NFL MVP. He went to the NFC Championship game where the the, the Kevin King couldn't guard anybody. He let three touchdowns by himself. We can get against that. Play better than Tom Brady. And he's sitting there like, okay. They just drafted my replacement. Um, they made it kind of obvious that I'm probably not going to end my career in Green Bay. It's something I've been saying I want to do. Saying I, my whole career. I, still, I believe Aaron Rodgers still wants to be a Packer for the rest of his life. But he, like he said himself, he likes to have, he likes, like, the, he kept saying the people, the people, the people. And what you mean, what he means by that, you just, you, you don't alienate. Like, you don't, what the Packers front office does is they like to, like, we're going to handle the business. Y'all going to handle the the football stuff. Football players, football. Front office, front office. We're separate. And Aaron Rodgers, in his opinion, he wants the front office and, to, and the players to, you know, have some conversation, mingle a little bit, get a little frisky. You know what I'm saying? Like, he wants to have that op- that communication that gave. He wants it to overlap a little bit. He don't want it to be like, he don't want football players in you know, every meeting trying to decide the 53-man roster. That's not what he wants. He doesn't want to do that himself, I'm pretty sure. What Aaron Rodgers wants is probably say in personnel, say in how like, the team functions, and to be heard, to have his voice heard, to actually be like, Feel how important he actually is to that team. Getting into my perspective of the whole situation, Aaron Rodgers wants to leave because he hasn't felt hurt, or the communication between him and the Packers in the past hasn't been up to par. He that he just hasn't been it hasn't been a partnership like he said in like he said on the Pat McAfee show in the past. He wants it to be a partnership. He has earned that to say the least he's the closest thing you can get in football to a LeBron like he's the close like he is because like he can take over a game and end you no matter what you do I've seen it and I'm getting on to the pack and get on Brian Goonville's buddy 
you're okay. You're a great drafter. You can you can draft well. That means you're a good scouter. You know, you know. These are these are these are good traditional qualities. But at roster building, no, no, you're not good. You're not great. You're uh, okay, decent on a good day, like. Over paying thirty two million dollars for the Preston for Preston Smith and Zadarius Smith is wild. Wild. The Preston Smith more than Zadarius. Like it's wild. And then spending like what was it, seven mil on Billy Turner? That's acceptable. That's cool, but it's still pretty a lot of money for somebody who hadn't proved himself to be good yet. But he's proved himself to be good now. So we're good. Uh Adrian Amos was amazing signing. Um and everything else has really been through the draft. Like, they don't have an inside linebacker. They don't have a line. They have Kenny Clark and a couple of, like, and, like, but, like, they don't have a line, a inside linebacker. They don't have a, a legitimate wide receiver, too. And, like, as much as you, like, can love Robert Tunyon and Alan Lazard and Marquez Vettis Cantling, those guys are B, like, C players. And, like, they don't get open enough. Like Aaron Rodgers don't want to play with that. Like, come on, like upgrade, upgrade. Don't downgrade. It's really simple. It's really, it's really simple. Do you want to win a ring? Then get Aaron Rodgers the help he needs. Do you not want to win a ring? Trade Aaron Rodgers and then plan for your future. That's the because the hole you get for Aaron Rodgers will help your future. And to end this video off, I'll be going into non-football or sports examples. And the first one I want to hit on is um, this part from New Avengers slash Avengers from Jonathan Hickman. Um, and in this part, uh, it's the end of the comic. And the universe is dying. And they're in a bad ways. And the Blue Marvel is sitting he's trying to get across to Reed Richards and Black, and Black Panther, who are part of the Illuminati. Um, is that you could have talked to us, you could have told us, we could have helped, we could have been trying to plan and help and make the situation better. But instead you went behind our backs, you deceived us, and you thought you knew everything. And you thought that there was no other way. And now we will never know. And now look where we are. Um, you have, uh, I think that's a perfect example of the sentiment Aaron Rodgers feels towards the Packers. Like, you didn't listen. You didn't you didn't talk to us. You just went behind my back. You just did what you need to do. Basically, the sentiment wise told me to shut up and dribble. It wasn't, wasn't what I would like in a relationship. You know, this is all business relationship, you know. If an actor at Marvel wanted to be up, like he was very valuable, very a top tier actor, like a Robert Downey Jr., wanted to be involved in like the way their story's going, of course, instantly you can be involved. Like, Aaron Rodgers doesn't want to control the Green Bay Packers; he just wants to be involved in the 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 say so and the culture and, and how it, everything is ran. You know, the, the, these type of relationships happen, and um type of things happens in relationships and the Packers can recover uh they just they just need to talk to him but, um he could possibly very well just be done and he could be um just over it at this point and th that's a scary sight because he could retire he could sit out and I love watching Aaron Rodgers play football but um you just gotta treat your players right you just gotta treat your best player like he is your best player you gotta treat the best player in the league like he is the best player in the league like comment subscribe and i'll see you in the next video peace out